Chanel Monet here. And I am your special guest substitute. Did you know that fewer than 600 people actually get to vote for president? Most people think that they voted for president, but to explain why and how that's not actually true, we're going to talk about the complicated way American democracy is set up. Hey everyone, I'm Kat Shea, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I teach history in Los Angeles. And this lesson is about the Electoral College. Joining me to help teach this lesson, we have a celebrity substitute, Janelle Monet. Hi, Kat. Hey, it's so good to see you. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for having me. I love the fact that we got paired up together. I think that we share a lot of really good values and I was just elated. Oh, same. Thank you so much for your dedication to teaching the next generation of future leaders. My grandmother instilled in us to vote. She was a sharecropper. She couldn't vote because of the color of her skin. So I take a personal investment in it. And if it's okay with you, Kat, I'm going to take over your lesson on the Electoral College. So why has basically no one ever actually voted for president? In order to understand that, you need to first understand the United States system of government. We're all aware that the U.S. is a democracy. What does that mean? The definition of democracy is a system of government by all the eligible members of the population. There are many ways to organize democracy the same way there are many ways to, let's just say, bake a cake. But democracies fall into two main categories. Direct democracy is where citizens vote on issues directly. If we were using direct democracy to decide what kind of cake I eat, I'd say, I vote for chocolate cake. And then that vote would be cast. A different way of organizing things is called representative democracy. In a representative democracy, you don't vote on things directly. Instead, you vote for a person, your representative, who you trust to make those votes for you. If we were using a representative democracy to decide what kind of cake I eat, I'd say, I vote for Janelle. And then I trust Janelle to pick my flavor of cake. Well, you're gonna get a red velvet. I trust you. Even if I didn't, I'd still have to. Mm. All right, how is it? Tastes like freedom. <laughs> there are some places in the United States where democracy is direct. For example, if you live in a state where citizens vote on ballot measures, but overall, the United States is a representative democracy, also called a republic. We have a very particular way of electing the highest position, the president. Before we get into how presidential elections work, I do have a student who is eager to learn more about this. Janelle, could we surprise her and let her join the lesson? Let's do it. You're gonna love her. Corey, Corey, Corey. Hey, what's going on? It's been like a minute. Not much, just, just out here chilling. So does that mean you're not doing your homework? So I think I told you that you're doing a political lesson with me. Yes, you did. I semi-lied to you because the person who is substituting with me is Janelle Monet. Wait, really? Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Um, kind of. No, not really. <laughs> you are so adorable. Thank you. I have heard nothing but beautiful things about you. Oh. You're a senior in high school. Yeah, I'm going to Howard, but... Um, Howard? Yes. I got accepted into Howard. Not a lot of people know that. I was supposed to go there, but I ended up going to performing arts school in New York. Wow. So what are you most excited about? I'm definitely meeting new people. And also freshman week, I heard it's really fun. <laughs> You're trying to go shopping to get things. Yes, but you know, it's quarantine, so I have to wait till I get there. I love to offer to buy anything that you need that can be shipped to possibly your dorm or your house so that you can take with you when you go to school. Is that oh okay? Oh my God, yes, that's, that's, that's fine. Thank you so much. It's an honor to see you and, and to know you're doing well. I hope that you enjoy our lesson and we refresh your mind on some of these topics. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Be great. Be amazing. Shine.
Wow. I love you, Miss Shay. I love you too, Janelle Monae. I love you too, Corey. <laughs> so we know about how democracies can be set up, but we still haven't answered why fewer than 600 people actually get to vote for the president. The U.S. president is chosen through the Electoral College. What does that mean? Well, the Electoral College is a system where you vote for someone who then votes for the president on your behalf. When you vote for president, you're actually voting for an elector who is a member of the Electoral College. After the general public cast their votes, those electors, all 538 of them, get together and cast votes for the president. Whichever candidate gets the most votes from those electors wins. Here's the catch. Those electors are actually given out state by state. So the president isn't just who wins the most votes across the entire country, it's who wins the most electors by state. That's right. The higher a state's population, the more electors they are assigned. So to become president, you need to win a majority or at least 270 of those electoral votes. Even if you only win a slim majority of the popular vote in a state, you usually win all of that state's electoral votes. That's why sometimes a candidate can win fewer people's vote across the country, but still be elected president. How is that possible? I know that's what you're asking yourself. Well, I'm gonna show you by running for president of my kitchen. <laughs> the voters I'm gonna try and win over are the candy in these jars. We have gumballs. We also have some fruit chews. And we have some blue taffy. To keep it simple, let's say each jar is its own state and each has one single electoral vote. Let's call our states Gum Sylvania, Fruititusets, and Kentaffy. And the candidates, you know them, Bryant Gumballs himself and Tonald Taffy. It's the political matchup of the century. In order for either candidate to win this election, they will need to win two electoral votes. So that means that they'll need to win two of the three states or jars. If I'm elected, I promise I'll do right by the good people of Gumsylvania. I'll fight to make sure that gumball machines are fully stocked and regularly repaired. For too long, politicians have listened only to some candidates. If you elect me, Tonald Taffy, I promise to give you the voice you deserve. And under my watch, no candy will ever be forced into a paper wrapper again. So let's say that Bryant Gumballs won over the gumballs hands down, and Tonald Taffy won over the fruit shoes and taffy. The question is, who won the election? Well, if we were just going by direct democracy, there are more gumballs than the other two candies combined. So whoever won over the gumballs would be the winner because they won more candy voters overall. But if we're going by our version of the Electoral College, the winner of the fruit juice and the taffies won two states instead of just one. So that candidate will become president. Whether or not this is a fair system or whether or not we wanted Donald Taffy, is one of the great political debates of our time. People from all walks of life disagree and debate about this. Some people think that the Electoral College is unfair because the candidate more people vote for doesn't always end up getting elected. But if it was just a popular vote, candidates could cater to only the places with the most people living in. And the issues facing smaller and more rural communities might get overlooked. So what did we learn? First off, we know that the United States is a representative democracy, otherwise known as a republic. The head of our representative democracy is our president, and our president is elected through the Electoral College. So why do fewer than 600 people in our whole country actually get to vote for president? The answer is because there are only 538 people in the Electoral College. And now, if you'll excuse me, mm, I love being president. If you want to contribute to an amazing cause, click the donate button to give to Project Isaiah, a new initiative designed to tackle hunger-related challenges brought on by the COVID-19 crisis. You can visit Isaiah.org for more information. It's time to take a break from class, but make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go. That way you'll never miss an episode of Celebrity Substitute, only on YouTube.